Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're gonna to be making a photo reel rock landscape using geometry nodes. Let's get started. So what we're gonna do is uh, first we're gonna delete everything just to get a clean slate. And I'm just gonna create a mesh plane and I'm gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna scale it on the X and scale it on the Y. I'm gonna, uh, let's see, I'm gonna grab this edge right here and G and X and just bring that over, grab this edge, G and X, bring that over there. Control R for loop cut and I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel a couple of times. Control R the other way and do that. And then we're gonna turn on proportional editing and I'm just gonna grab some of these uh, verts and I'll just move them around like this. We're just kind of lifting up one edge like so. Uh, and the way proportional editing works, you roll your mouse wheel once you activate it after you hit G to grab, and it will um, proportionally edit all the um, the vertexes nearby based on how big that, that circle is. You can see as I roll it down, it's gonna impact things less and whatnot. So anyways, just making kind of a cool little you know, cliff. I might slope this bit down over here. The other side might grab this, holding down Alt to click and get that whole edge. I'll just grab this. I'm just hitting E and moving my mouse. Do the same here. All right, now I'm going to grab this whole front bit right here and I hit E and I'm just going to grab this down and then scale Z a little bit and that's going to flatten it out. And I'll just maybe pull it back a little bit and then E, E, and I'm going to do the same kind of thing where I grab little sections and just adjust them. Control R, just create a loop cut in there. And I'm gonna just start grabbing these guys a little bit. All right, now we're gonna go out of uh, edit mode. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to add some geometry nodes to this. So let's go ahead and head over to the wrench icon, click on add modifier, and we're gonna go down to geometry nodes. And we're gonna click new to create a new system. Just bring this up and I'm gonna switch this over to the geometry nodes editor. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute points across the face of this entire object. So let's go search. So shift A search and type in distribute. Distribute points on faces. We're gonna drop this here. So we got all these little random random points all over. We'll keep this a density of 10 for now. Next, we're gonna to go to uh, volume. So points to volume. And we're gonna drop this here. This is gonna make it into kind of a cloud. We're gonna turn our density way up, like 200, make it really solid. And the voxel amount will turn up as well to maybe 100. And I'll take my radius down to 0.1, make it really small. Uh, turn up my voxel amount a little bit more. You can see it's starting to like kind of define the shape of my, uh, my space. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna grab a uh, volume to mesh. And I'll drop this here. We're gonna switch this from grid to amount. And this will let us kind of drag up a voxel amount. And I'm gonna set this to something like 400, I think. That should give me enough. Um, and just play around with this. I uh, might take my adaptivity up. So I'm gonna take that all the way up to one, uh, which kind of like smooths out the surface of stuff. So, and maybe you would take our radius to point two just to kind of fill the space. So you can see already, you know, we're getting this sort of rocky looking landscape. Now I wanna fill in these little gaps. I'll just get these little holes. So I wanna take my original geo and include it in the system. So I'm gonna grab a join, oops, not strings, join geometry node, okay? So we're gonna pop this right there and we're gonna take this one and bring it right over and connect it in. So that'll join the, oh, ah, there. So that'll join the original geometry system, which is the original, not geometry system, the original geometry, so that surface we made. When we start geometry nodes, it kind of gets rid of it. Once you pipe it in and start doing stuff to it, it sort of deletes the stuff. So we wanna add that original shape back in to kind of fill up the inside edge of everything. So, all right, cool, it's looking good. Now let's create some real irregularity to this by changing the position of everything using um, a Fornoy uh, texture. So I'm gonna come all the way back here to distribute points on faces and I'm gonna grab the set position node and I'm gonna drop this here and I'm gonna grab a Fornoy texture. And we're gonna set this from Euclidean to, uh, I don't know, Minkowski maybe, let's go for that. Maybe F2, I'm just guessing. And I'm gonna go for a separate X, Y, Z node and drop this here. We're gonna grab the color or the position, doesn't really matter, we'll just grab, let's grab the position. Put it in the vector. We're gonna separate out the X, Y, and Z values of this texture. 
And we're going to pipe it in here, but we just want to use the Z. So I'm going to combine X, Y, Z right here. And I'll grab the Z and bring it over. But I'll leave the X and Y at zero. And we'll pop this in here. So that's going to offset everything based on this noise. OK, so position is giving us like way too crazy results. So I'm going to use color instead. This will kind of bring it in a little bit more. Um, and now we can just play with the scale and the randomness. So scale and randomness are going to like the smaller the scale, the more you'll see the shape of the noise, which is good. That's kind of what you want. Um, the bigger it gets, the more it just kind of becomes like generic noise, and you can't really pick out shapes. But this is going to help shape stuff a little bit. OK, so now that we've done that, let's uh, let's fine tune our voxel amount and threshold and everything. So let's see. I might turn my voxel amount down here. I'm just going to play with these numbers. I really don't know kind of what result I'm going to get. There we go. That's pretty cool. So I've just set the density uh, of the source distribute points on the to 20. What that does is basically the more points you get, the more it's going to kind of you know, blur everything together a little bit. So let's go ahead and get a camera in here. So I'm going to go shift A and camera. I'll jump into my camera and I'll come over here to the view tab. and I'll click lock camera to view, go to my camera and I'm going to turn on depth of field and under viewport display, I'm going to turn up pass part two. That'll darken the outer edges of my frame. And I'm going to pick a nice little frame here. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like in Eevee. So I'm going to turn on rendered view. And I'm going to turn off scene world. And we're just going to use one of the built-in HDRIs. So let's go with, go with this one. And I'm going to turn on world opacity up. And I'm going to rotate things around a little bit. And over here in my render tab, I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And under ambient occlusion, I'm going to turn my factor up to 5. I really want the dark sort of crevices to get really dark and to pop. So I'm going to turn off my handles and controls as well. So I can really uh, get, uh, get a clean view. It's pretty cool. All right, now let's go ahead and create a nice texture for this. So I'm going to click on my surface here. Now we're going to have to add the texture in the geometry node system. But first, let's come over here and actually instance a new material into our scene. So there it is. So now we need to get the set material node. We can drop this here and select it. So now I've got this material um, selected. We can make changes over here or switch this over to the shader editor. So I'm going to take this base color and I'm going to make it a little bit kind of orange, I think. And I'm going to grab a musgrave texture and a bump node. And I'll drop the bump here. We'll take the height into the height and the normal into the normal. So the Musgrave texture is going to generate this really nice kind of random noise. It's a black and white image. And then that's going to go into the bump map, which will determine the height of sort of the simulated light, um, simulated surface that I'm just going to do for us with the bump node. I'll take the distance down to 0.1 and we'll take the scale right up. You can see how it looks super dense. We're also going to take the dimension down and the detail up. That will really make the noise very fine. Um, I'm going to bring the scale down, actually. I'm going to go all the way down to, let's see, I'm just going to play with that, the detail and the scale. I'm going to kind of do two levels, I think, of this noise. I'll do that one like that, and then Shift D to duplicate, bring this down. And I'm going to go for a mix color note and drop this here and plug this into the second one. And this one, I'm going to take the scale like really high. And I'm going to play with this factor until I get a nice mix of the two. Now you can do a lot more with different bumps and creating more variation stuff, but I'm just going to keep this here for now, I think, for this particular uh, system. Now I'm going to use this. I'm going to grab a color ramp. And I'm just going to go for a two-tone look with this uh, same bump. So the, the height map, the black and white values we generated here, I'm going to feed that into a color ramp. And I like this color, so I'll use this as kind of the basis for it. So I'll grab that color for both of those pips. I'll plug this in and then I'll grab one of them, maybe this lower one here, and just darken it a touch. And you can see I get different, um, a different look where it's actually going to color a little bit. Might make this one a little more saturated. All right, now I'm going to create a light in my scene. So I'm going to go Shift A and we're going to create a light sun lamp. And I'm just going to angle it a little bit and just kind of rotate it around until I get a nice, a nice look. Oh, that's quite nice. Look at that. All right, great. Now, we want a little more detail. So we want to see some rocks and pebbles and stuff scattered across any surface that's pointing up. So let's add that into our geometry node system. We're going to go to geometry nodes and we'll come over here and I'll grab this out. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a branch off of this and we're going to try and 
like pinpoint what face they're pointing up. So I'm going to turn all my controllers back on and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab a delete geometry node and I'm going to feed the geometry input into there. Um, and I'm going to plug this into our output. So this is now the only thing we're going to see. And what I want to do is do a distribute points on faces. I'll put this here. We won't have anything yet because there's no faces. We've deleted everything. And I want to grab a math node and set this to, uh, let's see, less than. And I want to grab a normal node. And I want to compare the Z values. So then I want to grab a separate X, Y, Z and put this here. So we'll put the normal into the vector and the Z into the value. So what's happening with this? The normal is a number uh, that represents the direction that uh, a face is pointing. So using Z, you know X, Y, and Z, what direction is it facing? So we're splitting it off. We're just looking at the Z. So we just want to see how much of it is pointing up. So how much is pointing up, right? So the size of that number determines how much the face is pointing up. So if it's um, let's say less than, let's say 0.5, then we're going to say, all right, well then delete that face. We don't want it. So we're going to plug that into our selection. And if I untick camera to view and jump out, you can see what's happening is we get all these points distributed across all the faces that are you know pointing up. And I can change this threshold to get rid of more, add more in. So and now what we can do is we can instance stuff on these points. So I can come over here and I can say instance on points, instance on points, drag this here, and then we want to create an instance. So let's go for a UV uh, sphere. Sphere. I'm just going to turn my segments and rings down just to be safe. Turn my radius down to like 0.2 and I'm going to plug the mesh into the instance. There we go. And I'll take this down and I'm going to create some random scale for these, uh, these little spheres. So what I'll do is I will grab a random node, random value node. We're going to switch this to vector and I'll plug the value into the scale. And then um, I'm just going to change the min and the max. I'll bring the max down a bit. I keep the minute zero. And then we're going to get all kinds of crazy weird shapes. I don't want anything that's get too like, do like a canyon kind of thing. You know, like if I shift D to duplicate, I'm going to rotate Z 180. Okay, so um, I thought I'd, now that we built this cool system, I thought I'd use it, like push it a bit further and try and create a really cool scene uh, using this rock generator, basically. So let's do it. So I'm going to, first off, turn down uh, the density of everything so it's a bit easier to work with and a bit faster. So one of the things I'm going to do is turn down the number of little rocks that get generated. That should speed things up quite a lot. Um, and I also want to have a look at uh, the voxel amount, I think. Um, I'll keep this one at 250. And I'll drop this one to 250 as well. This will like, you know, simplify the mesh a little bit, but makes things a bit quicker to work with. So just adjust our view some here. And what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to take the shader and just, I'm going to make a little tweak. Do I, let me just check. What does the tweak shader look like? I've got roughness and specular. Yeah. So I want to turn the, I want to turn the specular down on this to like 0.2 and I might turn the roughness up a bit. I think that should look pretty good. And I think I want to push the color a little bit. So I'm going to switch back over to the shader editor and um, I'll take the bright pip and I'm just going to push it a little more into like a red. I just think that might look a little bit nicer. And this one as well, even a little more saturation, just really rich, make those colors a bit more rich. Okay. Now <clears throat> I also want to start kind of, I don't know, getting the image uh, lighting to work a little bit better. So I'm going to switch from object mode in my shader over to the world shader. So now in the world shader right now, we're using this temporary sort of, you know, built in one by turning off scene world. So this means we're not using the scene world shader. We're just using this uh, setup here. But if I turn this on, you can see we go for just get this um, gray background, which you can see here. Um, and what I want to do is bring in an HDRI. Now I like to use Polyhaven uh, to find HDRIs. I've got a ton of free HDRIs and I've grabbed one there for free that I've downloaded. Um, and I'll just create an environment texture node and then click open. There it is. Okay, I'll bring that in. So it's called Industrial Sunset 02 Pure Sky and I've grabbed the 2K size. It's all we really need for this. 
and I'm going to plug the color into the color and you'll see we get a nice uh, a nice sky there. And then I'm going to rotate it around a little bit. So I'm going to grab a texture coordinate node and a mapping node and I'll drop this here and I'll take the generated into the vector the vector into the vector. If you watch through my tutorials, I explain this almost every time, but it's worth always repeating. The uh, This setup that I've just done is basically what was already happening. It's the default setup. So the vector, you know, which is the, the numbers that tell Blender how to place a flat 2D image onto some 3D surface. The vector for uh, this, um, this node was by default using this generated setup. So the generated output here from the texture coordinate is the same that it was already using, right? And so by plugging that into this mapping node, we can now change it so we can rotate it. So I'm gonna rotate on the Z and I'll just kind of spin this thing around until I get a nice nice point. Oh, that's cool. Let's get the sun in there. That looks really good, doesn't it? You can rotate this stuff around to find like really nice angles um, and get stuff to look good. So I'll keep it like that for now because I kind of like that. Okay. now. Let's build some stuff with this. I'm going to create. Um, I'm going to create an archway. So I'm going to just turn on my um, controllers and stuff so I can see everything again. So I'm going to go Shift A and I'm going to create a cube. And I'm also going to unlock my camera to view by coming over to view and unticking that. If you saw me have this little menu, I've just put it in my quick favorites. If you right click, you can add things to your quick favorites. And if you hit Q, it always pops up. All right, I'm going to jump out of my camera and come over here. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm just going to grab the surface of this object and I'll hit E to extrude and I'll just kind of rotate around. I'm going to turn off proportional editing and let's see, I'll do this, grab this over here. And I'm just kind of making a bit of a random archway. Right, I'm going to move this guy over here, kind of line it up. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put our um, geometry nodes set up onto this thing. So let's uh, switch to geometry nodes. And on this guy, we can come over here to the wrench and we're gonna add the geometry nodes modifier and we'll just click this little drop down and we'll grab our geometry node setup. And there we go, now we got some, we got some rock. I wanna scale it sort of along here. So let me switch to the local coordinates and scale X, there we go. I feel like I'm getting lots of um, like the the base geo is really showing through. Um, I might experiment with just taking that off. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna turn off all my controllers and stuff, and I'm just put this guy back a little bit. It's pretty cool. Look at that. It's nice. Now let's take the same object. Like you know, we've got it. Let's uh, let's use it. Let's um, let's just shift D to duplicate and see what else we can get out of this. I'm gonna rotate it on the Y and it looks like we get some really nice like rock patterns coming um, out of this thing. Like look at look at those shapes, like that looks great. They look like proper, proper cliffs. Um, I'm gonna switch back to global. So I'm gonna hold down the comma key and switch over to global. Just make it a little bit easier for me to move it around the scene. Looks cool. Maybe shift D again. Maybe scale Z, put it down. Let's say we could just like pepper these around and end up with some really cool uh, rock formations. Um, shift D, grab X and put one way in the background. It gives us like this kind of like ridge in the distance. Looks quite nice. Now we don't have to just keep using this, this arch, of course. We could use other things. Um, like I could grab, you know, I could go shift A and create another cube, bring it close, go into edit mode, and just like make some make some weird faces. Place the uh, modifier on it for geo nodes, grab the geo nodes object, and bam, there we go. Another random boulder object. Let's put a bit more atmosphere in the scene. So I'm going to switch back over to the world shader. So let's go to their shader editor, make sure we're in the world. And I'm going to grab a volume scatter node and I'll plug that into the volume. 
And then we're going to bring the density down to 0.1, maybe 0.01. And the anisotropy, we're going to just drag that around to it's like 0 0.9, 0 0.99 something. Or point, sorry, 0.999 to start. I'm going to bring the density up a little bit. And there it is. All right, finally. There you go. I'm going to take the angle up to like 10, maybe. That'll help the light bounce a little bit more. Take the strength up as well to maybe 50. It's probably a bit too much. 20. Might add in one more light, maybe a point light. I'm going to turn this one way up. We'll go to 100 with it. 1,000. Make it you know, similar kind of yellow color. And I'll just try to position this in a way that's going to give me just a little more detail on some of that rock. It's kind of a nice composition. I like that, I think. All right. So let's uh, switch back over to GeoNodes. And then what we can do is, so the way to think about this is the radius, right, of the voxels sort of smooths out the surface. The tinier the radius, the more pockmarked the surface is going to look. And then the voxel amount is sort of the total detail. So if we turn this up to 500, there we go. Just wanted a little bit of something just to pick out that and differentiate it from the background. I think that looks pretty good. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and uh, enjoyed making this cool rock scene uh, using geometry nodes. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. It goes a long way to helping the channel grow. Really appreciate all the support um, from everyone and special thanks to all the patreon supporters and everybody that's a supporter on, by joining on youtube uh thank you so much to all of you really appreciate you thanks again i will catch you in the next tutorial until then have a fantastic week cool we're done let's call it let's call it